The puck dropped for the 2024-25 USHL season just two days ago, so today we're going to do a deep dive season preview. You are Locked On NHL Prospects, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, and welcome back to Locked On NHL Prospects, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. On this show, we break down everything prospects related for you five days a week, Monday through Friday. Uh, on today's show, we're going to be diving deep into my domain, the USHL, as I am uh, the USHL and crossover scout for elite prospects this season. And I'm very excited to present some fascinating draft eligibles here to you today in the first segment. In the second segment, we're going to look at some key storylines to keep an eye on this year. And finally, we're going to look at some USHL rookies. Some of them are draft eligibles. Some of them are D-1 talents. Uh, but there's a lot to dig into here here today. Uh, before we kick off the show, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a free three-week tri trial of N the NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. So uh, today is a very exciting episode because hockey is back. The USHL season has officially commenced. Uh, the WHL and the QMJHL are also now underway. There's a lot of things to get excited about, whether it's Roger McQueen's four-goal performance in the opening night game for the Brandon Wheat Kings, who is probably going to push for a third overall uh, type of uh, range in the draft uh, come June. Could even push as high as number one. I mean, James Higgins isn't quite entrenched in that spot just yet. There's a lot of moving parts here now that hockey has begun for this 2024-25 season. But today we're going to be focusing on the USHL, including the US NTDP. Uh, there's a lot of draft eligible talents in these leagues, and uh, we're going to be doing a bit of a quick fire round here because we have one segment to look through about eight or nine players that I think are, are worth highlighting uh, in terms of draft eligible talents that people will, will want to keep an eye on. These are players that have enough skill, enough tools that they could push for first round, second round, third round spots come NHL draft day. Not all of them are going to go in that range, certainly, but I think a lot of these guys are certainly going to be pushing inside that first round. And starting off here uh, with the Youngstown Phenom, uh, and Adam Banach, who's only played uh, one to two games so far this season where he's logged two assists. This is a player who I think is really going to be pushing for the MVP award in the USHL this season. He's a five foot seven, yes, five foot seven, 161 pound left shot centerman. And he is incredibly pacey, incredibly quick, and is fantastically skilled. He has a really high motor and uh, has a lot of the things that I look for in undersized talents in terms of overcoming the odds and not only making the NHL, but becoming an impact piece at that level. Banak is constantly looking for uh, ways to get to the middle of the ice. He's constantly looking to create dangerous chances for his teammates. He's a, an elite level playmaker and he thinks the game at a very high end level. If we're going by elite prospects, uh, tool grades, I would say that his, his hockey IQ is at least a six and a half graded as well above like, NHL average in terms of projection and uh, on top of that he has a relentless motor he never stops working and certainly he can get overpowered uh, I mean he's 161 pounds he's five foot seven he's not going to to, to be a, a physical force at the USHL let alone the NHL but the array of tools that he has, uh, the intelligence he has on the puck, and his ability to create things on every single shift in all three zones, whether it be creating dynamic breakouts in the, in the defensive zone, whether it be uh, going east to west in the neutral zone, trying to pry open defensive structures, or in the offensive zone, just going to work, whether it be at even strength or on the power play. This is a very dangerous offensive talent who I'm going to keep my eye on uh, like really all season long, and I'm very excited for all the viewings i'm going to log of him because uh early days for the, the draft cycle still but he could be one of my favorites in this 2025 class and i really hope he ends up going in the first round despite his stature next up we have will moore of the us ntdp a six foot two 161 pound left shot centerman who is all skill 
the tools with this player are phenomenal. He uh, developed in the in the GTHL. This is actually a, a Toronto M M Mississauga product and really lit up the GTHL in his time there uh, before moving on to the uh, U17 NTDP last season where he scored 43 points in 50 cumulative games, including 14 goals and 25 points in 35 games against USHL competition on that U17 team. And the U17 NTDP team uh, typically loses their games in the US SHL by decent margins like they are a U17 team playing against U20 competition so that's to be expected but uh, to put up those numbers in that environment is really impressive and uh, uh, he is all speed a uh, tremendous puck handler really in, 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 like skilled and creative playmaker with the puck on a stick he can finish his chances too he could be a real triple threat in the offensive zone but um, while the skating ability is really good and there's some real like Michael Hage type of flair in his game of how he creates creates his chances in transition. Um, there's still uh, some question marks I have with this game. The door is wide open for him to push to be the go-to player on offense with the NTDP this season. Uh, but there's a level of inconsistency and some disengagement in his game. So we're going to see if he like leaps through that door uh, opening or maybe just saunters through it to be like the go-to guy without being dominant uh, for the NTDP team this year. But a lot to like with his game and the upside is sky high. He could end up going top 10 on draft day because, uh, yeah, the skill is real with Will Moore. Uh, next up, we have a pair of NTDP defensemen, both right shots, in Charlie Treadway. Uh, uh, very young for the draft class is on August 2nd, 07th birthday. He's six foot 190 pounds. And uh, I've loved a couple of viewings of him so far. At his best, he is a dominant two-way force who keeps a really tight gap, can suffocate uh, play like while defending the rush, uh, while also being physical and also being quite competent with the puck on his stick and moving it up the ice. Uh, there, there, there are some flashes of, of Jake Sanderson in his game. That said, there is a real level of inconsistency here as well. When he's not on his game and not showing those bright flashes, uh, he's making pretty consistent mistakes. So um, whether it be in the defensive zone and being really loose with this gap and really passive in how he's engaging uh, attackers coming down his side of the ice, uh, or even on the puck being really hesitant under pressure, uh, bobbling the puck under pressure, making a poor pass uh, in those situations. So a player who still needs some development ahead of him, but I think he's going to be munching minutes for the, the NTDP this year. He's already lost. Uh, to uh, a goal and assist in his two first games with the program this season after scoring 14 points in 33 USHL games last year. And uh, he's also off to Boston University in a year's time. So he's going to be at, at a good development program there, but a really intriguing piece. Next, uh, Carter Amico, another uh, big right shot defenseman, this time six foot five. 205 pounds, um, March 15th, 07th birthday. This is a really good skater. Uh, he's he like with the puck on his stick, builds his speed with crossovers going east west. He can really be quite um deceptive with the puck on his stick as well in those situations. Uh, really solid puck handler, especially for a player of his size and being a defenseman, obviously. Uh, so that's something that that's definitely stood out in my first viewings. Uh, there's a level of chaos in his game, certainly. There's still a lot lot of uh control that he's gonna have to learn in the coming like months and years uh but as a longer term project perhaps a really really intriguing blue liner um he could really be punishing physically defensive instincts have been very strong my first viewings and even the flashes of offense in his game uh show some real runway to develop into so amico is another player that could definitely push for a first round selection come draft day another undersized forward i'm a big fan of this time from the ntdp LJ Mooney, uh, an absolute spark plug. He never stops working. He's so energetic. He's really speedy. He's a great puck handler. Really good two-way impact as well. He is five foot six and 146 pounds currently as a right shot right winger. Um, so the stature is going to scare off most NHL teams come draft day. But this is a player who already shown last season with the U18 team uh, in the in the NTDP playing up an age group uh, where he scored seven goals and 20 points in 20 games for them, uh, as well as. 33 points in 41 games with the U17 program. He especially shown internationally at the U17 World Championships. He scored seven points in seven games, including four goals. And at the U18 World Championships in May, he scored two goals and four assists for six points in seven games. A really, really good performance. He's shown on every shift he was on the ice there for Team USA and uh, definitely put his name on the map as a player to watch. And uh, 
hopefully a player that could even push it for a first round type of ranking. But the last NTDP player I wanted to shout out here is Cole McKinney. There's a bunch of other players that we're going to get to. We have a lot of months left uh, in this draft class. We're definitely going to do some deep dives on a bunch of other NTDP talents this year. But uh, Cole McKinney is an interesting one. I've seen him ranked very high early on this season, um, like well inside the first round. And I don't quite see that. This is more of a second maybe even third round projected talent in my eyes. Uh, pretty good shot. Uh, good, in, good, good in the face-off circle. He's a centerman, uh, right shot, six foot, 190 pounds. He's stocky, uh, well-built, um, tough to, to knock off the puck. Uh, but beyond that, he's used a lot in defensive situations, but his defensive scanning has let him down significantly in my viewings. Uh, and offensively, just doesn't really read the play overly actively. Uh, he's a lot more reactionary, and I think that the upside here is very much limited into a bottom six NHL capacity. Um, if that, um, we'll, we'll see, obviously, as the year goes on, how that will change. But as of right now, any any top six, even middle six projections, uh, are a little bit doubtful in my mind with Cole McKinney. But uh, the two last players I wanted to shout out here are uh, from non-NTDP circles here. First, we have Benjamin Kevin uh, from the Des Moines Buc Buccaneers, and uh, he's a six foot, 183 pound right shot forward who uh, scored the most points of any player returning this USHL season. All 30 point a game scorers from last year's uh, USHL have graduated to the college ranks, uh, which leaves a draft eligible talent in Kevin uh, to, to lead the way in terms of uh, track record of scoring at the USHL level. He scored 57 points, including 24 goals in 59 games last season is already off to a point of game to start with a goal and assist through two games this year. Uh, he's a player I'll keep an eye on this year. Uh, really interesting play driving abilities. And I think he's a, he's a pretty skilled player as well. Um, probably more of a second round ranking uh, at, at this stage of the draft than a first rounder. But uh, I'm curious to see how he continues to improve this season. Last but not least, I wanted to give a shout out to Lev Katz from the Green Bay Gamblers, a five foot eight, 176 pound left shot centerman who's impressed a couple of us scouts at, at Elite Prospects already this season in his first two games. Only allowed one assist so far, but uh, but a player who thinks the game really well, and uh, I'm curious to, to, to keep an eye on this season. And uh, before we jump into the next segment, this episode's actually like a podcast format of an article I wrote over at Elite Prospects, my debut article at Elite Prospects. So if you want to learn more about all these players and really get some, some deep dive analysis, uh, the link is going to be in the description down below to go read that piece. But, but before we continue with the show and look at some of the key storylines in the USHL this season... A quick word from our sponsors over at Game Time. If you want last minute tickets, Game Time is the place to be. With Game Time, you can get awesome last minute deals where you can save up to 60% on whatever event you are interested in, in attending. Whether it's a sporting event, whether it's a concert, a comedy show, whatever it is that you are interested in, Game Time has you covered. Game Time also offers awesome zone deals where you pick the zone or the section and Game Time selects the seat for you for added potential savings, especially if you have a, a really tight schedule and something opens up for you last minute where you have some time to go out and do something fun to treat yourself to an event. Game Time is exactly what you need. Game Time also gives you a lowest price guarantee. If you find a better price than what is listed on Game Time, just have to show that receipt to Game Time and you will get 110% of the difference in order to go with Game Time to your event. Take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply, but again, use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Alrighty, so we have three key storylines here uh, for you today. Uh, all three of these featured in that article that I did write at Elite Prospects on EP Ringside. Um, and first, we're going to look at uh, the Chicago Steel, a team that has been developing a, a bunch of talent in recent years uh, coming from out of the USHL. But last year was a bit of a down year. Uh, they were playing 
relatively mediocre hockey. Uh, it was a relatively uh, shallow uh, team that, that Chicago had, and uh, Michael Haig really dragged them into the playoff race with a scintillating second half where he was scoring almost two points a game uh, there for Chicago. But uh, their recruitment is really the thing that has shown the brightest in recent seasons uh, from talents like Michael Haig, uh, but also... Max Celebrini, Adam Fantilli, um, and then if you go back a bit further, Matthew Coronado, Sean Farrell. There's been a lot of talent coming out of the Chicago Steel program, and especially talent recruited as 16-year-olds, and also many of which have made the jump to the NTDP uh, in their draft years, let alone as D-plus ones in, uh, in Fantilli and Celebrini specifically. And there might be another such player on their roster this season, and Adam Valentini. Valentini led the entire GTHL in scoring last season, uh, where he logged 52 goals and 134 points in 57 games um, at overall in U16 competition, and specifically in the GTHL, scoring 31 goals and 67 points in 32 games, which is excellent production and top of the league. Not half bad. And uh, he's also already off to a good start uh, to his USHL career with the goal and the assist in two games with Chicago. And uh, both of those came in his debut performance. He's already signed to Cortex Management, so clearly a player that uh, already has a lot of eyes on him. And uh, at five foot eleven, hundred eighty three pounds, he's a left shot forward, and so much skill, so much pace. Really intelligent player. There's a lot of upside with this guy, and uh, I'm very much looking forward to seeing how he develops this season and uh, whether or not he moves his commitment to the University of Michigan up a season. He's currently committed there um, for his D plus one year, so two years from now. Um, but there's a possibility that he like lights up the league so much this year in the USHL that uh, he jumps forward uh, a year and and just leaps into the NCAA as a draft eligible next season. There's also Alexander Haig, um, Michael Haig's younger brother, who is a really notable prospect here. He was fourth in GTHL scoring last season, so just a little bit behind Valentini, where he logged 18 goals and 53 points in, in 32 games. He's a bit smaller than uh, Valentini. He's not as physically mature just yet uh, at five foot eight and 163 pounds. But again, they're 16 year old hockey players. They still have a lot of growing into their frames to do. So I'm curious to see how uh, how Alexander Haig is going to perhaps following the footsteps of his older brother um, and, and also alongside a player that he's already quite familiar with in Adam Valentini. Um, so those are two players I'm going to be keeping an eye on this season in that Chicago Steel system. And I'm really hoping for a good year from that program because they consistently de deliver some of the most entertaining hockey that there is to see in the entire United States Hockey League. Uh, beyond them, I also think that um, Dubuque is a really interesting team this season. Uh, of course, we're excellent last year as finalists uh, in, in, in um, the Clark Cup. But uh, they added in a lot of senior talent this year. Again, every team in the USHL lost their best players in the offseason. Like, no top scorers are returning. There's so much turnover year upon year in the USHL, even more so than in the CHL, because you have players jumping into the NCAA when they're 18, 19 years old, not just when they're 20, uh, and, and making the leap into the, to the AHL, for instance. So um, always a lot of things shifting in, in the United States Hockey League, but Dubuque is really trying to get ahead of the curve by rather than bringing in young 16 year old players like Chicago is doing just going out and taking drafted players already uh, from, like, from NHL teams and bringing them into their lineup. So they brought in uh, Hickey Rohanen, who was drafted this season by the Philadelphia Flyers on the third round, following a really good campaign in, in Finland last year, where he shone really brightly, especially at the U18 World Championships, has probably Finland's best forward that tournament. Uh, he really impressed me specifically. Uh, really good physical tools, uh, impressive playmaking in tight from right around the net. He's very metal driven, and I think he's going to uh, really, really eat up the competition in the USHL. Um, beyond him, you also have Cole Spicer coming in, uh, who ha already has two NCAA seasons under his belt uh, with the University of Minnesota du Duluth, but uh, it just wasn't quite going his way. Uh, he only got 15 cumulative points in those two seasons in 49 games, had some injury issues last year as well. And he's also a player at, uh, because he went through the NTDP program and then uh, in, into the NCAA directly from that. 
he hasn't been able to actually be the go-to offensive star on his team since he was playing U15 hockey. So I'm very curious to see how he takes on this role, whether he beats out uh, Rohanen for that 1C position uh, like down the middle. And uh, if he does, he could be like the most dominant forward in the entire league as a 20-year-old who already has two seasons of NCAA hockey under his belt. So definitely a player to keep an eye on. Uh, and lastly, there's also um, Christian Kostadinsky, uh, another Boston prospect. Uh, Spicer himself was also a Boston Bruins selection two years ago. Uh, Kostadinsky was a seventh-round Bruins selection from a year ago, and he's a really hulking six foot six defenseman who uh, was the captain for Ferlinda's J20 team last year and uh, is now making his way over to the USHL, where he's going to have less room to work with. And with his range, I think he's going to be quite dominant in defending the rush at the USHL level uh, because he is so rangy and so physical and just massive. He's a brick wall uh, on the defensive side of things. So very curious to see how he will fare with Dubuque as well. Uh, last but not least for this uh, segment of the storylines to follow is the U.S. NTDP, there is no clear superstar this year, which is a big difference from the past couple seasons. There's no player like James Higgins in this lineup. There's no Logan Cooley. There's no Will Smith. Even Orion Leonard isn't in, on this team. So uh, a lot of doors are open for NTDP players to step into the spotlight and take control of the team, uh, take the bull by the horns. And I think Will Moore is the the main candidate to do that on the offensive side, probably Charlie Treadway and, uh, and, and, and uh, Carter Amico on the defensive side of things. But uh, I, I'm really curious to see if any player is able to become like the, a decisive factor game after game after game after game. It might be LJ Mooney. I mean, he brings so much pace to the equation and having already played quite a few games at the USHL level and played them very, very well. Uh, I, I think that he could also be a player that that leads by example on that team and outworks his teammates and uh, perhaps also is able to elevate his line mates into to joining his commitment to every single shift. So a lot to look forward to with the NTDP. It's a very different uh, look of a team compared to past years rather than being built around one focal point. Results are going to be won by committee this season rather than by a single dominant force unless any player establishes themselves in that role. So a lot to look forward to in the USHL this season and a couple other key storylines that I think are really, really interesting but don't have time to cover here today, uh, but that I did cover in the article that I did write. So uh, if you're curious, you can go check that out. But uh, before we wrap up the show by looking at some of the projected star players of the United States Hockey League, this year a quick message from our sponsors over at FanDuel you've heard us talk all about FanDuel America's number one sports book and now through September 22nd all FanDuel customers can bet five dollars and get a free three-week trial of the NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV then with a YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out of market game. Uh, all you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel any time. Whether you want to take your swings on American football or European football, the Champions League is now in full swing uh, with, with the first match day now all wrapped up. And uh, all the big leagues are now really getting into the flow of things, whether it's the Premier League, uh, La Liga, the Bundesliga, the choice is yours, or maybe you're more partial to golf or tennis. FanDuel has everything that you could possibly want to take your swings on. Just visit FanDuel.com and download America's number one sportsbook. Alrighty, let's wrap up the show here in the final segment by looking at some really intriguing players. Uh, I, I highlighted about six or seven players that I wanted to look at here that are potentially going to be stars this season. Uh, a couple um, different categories here. Uh, we have the physicality in one. We have the rookie watch in two. And we have a single player I want to talk about in the third category. So starting off here, we've got uh, two physical phenoms that are both Ottawa Senators draft picks from the 2023 draft class in Javon Moore and Blake Montgomery. Uh, these are two players that are six foot four, really physical. Um, Montgomery played a full season last year already um, where he scored almost a point a game that led to him being drafted in the fourth round by Ottawa. Javon Moore was also picked in the fourth round by the Ottawa Senators last season at 112th overall, uh, just about five slots ahead 
of uh, Blake Montgomery. So two players that Ottawa are very keenly targeted. And uh, and yeah, I mean, M Montgomery, as I mentioned, uh, played a really strong season last year, scoring 22 goals and 43 points in 58 games for the Lincoln Stars. While Javon Moore's only logged eight career USHL games at the time of recording. He played five in last season uh, where he scored two assists and that's it. And this year he's played three games so far with the Sioux Falls Stampede, scoring a single assist. So taking a little bit of, uh, to get going this year, but the raw tools are so fantastic. Uh, he's a really crafty puck handler and pairing that with a level of power and playmaking ability makes him an absolute demon in the offensive zone. So while this is a leap in competition from the high school level, so give him a month or two or three to get started this year. But when he finds his footing uh, at the USHL level, I think he's going to be a force to be reckoned with and probably the, the, the leading offensive producer for the Sioux Falls Stampede. Uh, I also wanted to give a little shout out to Oliver Zmurniaks, a Latvian centerman uh, who is a D minus one still. He's a 2026 eligible and very young for that draft class, might I add. He just turned 16 on the last day in July. And he's already uh, six foot one and 190 pounds. And he absolutely tore apart the Latvian pro leagues last season. And I do mean leagues plural, both the second division, uh, where he scored 19 goals and 32 points in 17 games. And the the the, pro, the first tier of Latvian pro hockey, where he scored five goals and 15 points in 18 games as a 15-year-old kid, uh, earned him a quick transfer to the Sioux City Musketeers in the USHL this season. And I think that he's going to have a very interesting year. Um, he hasn't scored yet in his first two games, but again, first two games on North American ice, and he's a very newly, newly turned 16-year-old kid still. But the level of skill he has in his game, uh, he's already quite polished in his ability to access the middle of the ice and leverage his physicality uh, and his physical tools overall, whether it be, be with the puck without it, uh, very effectively. So he's a player I'm going to keep my eye on all year long and uh, a really interesting case as a high skill Latvian who could very well become the highest drafted Latvian in NHL draft history when his time comes. But uh, first, we have to see how he adapts to the North American ice here with Sioux City. And uh, he could also be a contender for maybe not the Rookie of the Year award, because there are a lot of contenders for that award, like Adam Banach, for instance, and Adam Valentini and uh, Heike Rohanen. A lot of players are going to be eligible in, in, that, in that mix. Uh, Javon Moore as well, of course. Um, but I think he's a player that will definitely put his name on the map and uh, and maybe score upwards of 40 points this year in the USHL. Uh, the last uh, couple players I wanted to cover here are Will Zellers, uh, a draft pick in the third round of the Colorado Avalanche, who another possible contender for that Rookie of the Year award because he absolutely lit up the USHS prep uh, circuit last year with Shattuck St. Mary's scoring 57 goals and 111 points in 54 games with them, which earned him that 76th overall selection. And at 5'11", 170 as a left shot center slash left winger, um, very skilled player for the Green Bay Gamblers and uh, could also be their go-to offensive producer this year. He's yet to got, get into a game just yet, but uh, once he does, get into the lineup and uh, make his mark consistently. I think this is a guy that could blow open games with his dynamic skill, his puck handling ability, and his raw speed. Uh, a really, really intriguing player that I think Colorado fans are going to be quite excited about having in their pipeline. But last but not least, I wanted to talk you through uh, who I think is going to be the best defenseman in the USHL this season. And uh, might be going out slightly on a limb here just because He's not the oldest of defensemen. He's not the biggest of the defensemen. He's not the toolsiest of defensemen in this league. But uh, it is Luke Osborne, a player who just turned 18, despite already having been drafted by the Buffalo Sabres. He's a September 9th, 06 birthday, one of the youngest players drafted in the 2024 class. And last season with the Youngstown Phantoms, he uh, rose his stock from almost an unknown going into camp to a top pairing guy by the end of the season playing along, alongside Andrew Strothman. So uh, really, really big progression from him uh, last season. And he shines brightly because of his high degree of hockey IQ. He reads the ice like no other defender in the USHL does, in my opinion, which isn't the highest of bars. The USHL isn't exactly renowned for its its high degree of defensive talent and, uh, and, and, 
perhaps compact defensive structures. But uh, that being said, he's still a really good on puck player on top of uh, making a really good defensive impact. He's a good puck handler, uh, really good at distributing the, uh, the puck in the offensive zone. There's flashes of really impressive puck moving and playmaking ability in his game. And uh, as a p- potential like true two-way guy uh, at the next level, I mean, he's six foot one, 183 pounds. He has the frame. Uh, he's young, has the runway. I think he's going to be a real difference maker for the Youngstown Phantoms this season. And uh, uh, they they currently have a one and one record. So one, one win, one loss. And he's yet to score a point just yet this season. But uh, the one game I did watch of those two was really impressive. And uh, yeah, he seems to be hitting the ground running this year. And I think that, that the Buffalo Sabres got another gem, which they just keep on doing on draft day. It seems to be a trend I'm noticing in the past couple seasons. And uh, yeah, I think it was a really good selection there in the fourth round at 108th overall to take a player with such a like like skyrocketing trajectory in terms of his development uh who's also play, developing in a really good program in the ushl there with youngstown and he is going off to the university of wisconsin next season which has not been the strongest development program in the past couple seasons but they have a brand new coaching staff this year so we're going to see how that adapts but uh that being said, that kind of wraps up this USHL season preview, uh, taking you on a bit of a deep dive on a bunch of different players and notable names that you might want to keep an eye on, some of the key storylines to keep track of. And uh, there's a lot more information in the article if you want to go uh, check that out. But uh, for the time being, that wraps up the show today. Thank you so much for tuning into the solo episode today. And uh, whether you're watching on YouTube, where please feel free to leave us a comment, let us know what you thought of the episode, uh, let us know what, what you you think about these players in the ushl this season or if there are any other draft eligibles to the 2025 class that have caught your eye already and if you're listening on your favorite podcasting platform please make us your first listen of the day we have so so much appreciation for our everydayers who uh, uh keep on tuning in to us rambling about prospects and uh for your second listen of the day you can head on over to locked on sports today a 24-hour news show going deep into everything sports related you're never gonna miss any news in the sporting world if you keep your eye over on that and uh that wraps things up here. I'm Sebastian High, a USHL and crossover scout over at Elite Prospects, typically joined by Hattie Kalakesh, who will be back for our following episodes. And uh, we hope that you tune back in very shortly.